What's up? All right, so today I thought we'd just kind of keep it chill and have a little chat, do a little bit of a Q&A, and also kind of give you some updates on the channel, where I've been, and why video production hasn't been as consistent. Um, I know it's never been consistent, but this time I have a really good excuse. And if you haven't seen already, the main time sink has been this bag of coffee right here. Uh, I worked really hard with my good friend Jose down in San Diego. He actually um, was one of my groomsmen uh, to bring this coffee from Mexico. Uh, Mexico is something that's really near and dear to my heart. I'm Filipino and I've probably made more tamales than I have lumpia. Um, so to bring a product from Mexico has been really cool for us and also to be able to work with a roaster in our hometown has been absolutely amazing and I'm really grateful for the experience. So shameless plug, if you haven't, check out the coffee. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description. Uh, if you want to try something new, this is probably the coffee for you. This is a naturally processed single origin coffee from Mexico. Uh, but the cool thing is, is it has a 90 hour fermentation process on top of the natural process. So you're gonna get the flavor profile from Ethiopia, but you're going to get a lot more interesting acidity from the fermentation. So this is definitely a really wild and crazy coffee that if you've never tried fermentation, fermented coffee, I would definitely uh, give this one a shot. So alongside the coffee, what I've also been working on is a coffee shop. I really wanted to have everything there from coffee to coffee equipment and just kind of give everyone the setup that I have. So we've been lucky enough to be able to be an authorized distributor of fellow products and to kind of celebrate the success, we are going to be giving away either the white or black Stag EKG kettle. It's up to you, whoever wins. And then also one of Fellow's pour over systems, either the Stag XF or the Stag X. It all depends on um, what, what you want or whatever the winner wants. But the big thing, big thing we're trying to get in is the grinder. The grinder has been my favorite addition to my personal coffee setup and it's absolutely amazing. And for anyone into coffee, you know, the grinder does play a big part in the coffee pipeline. So we're working on that. We'll have updates on that if we're able to get that as a giveaway prize. But for now, I do think the Stag EKG kettle is something that a lot of people lust after. And it is um, a really nice piece that comes out at, at a pretty high price point, but it is worth it. So um, yeah, if you're interested in winning it and you are kind of on the fence about trying our coffee, we thought we'd provide a little bit of an incentive. Uh, so uh, in terms of videos, I just released a five simple habits video. If you haven't checked that out, link in the description. Um, there are two more videos also in the pipeline that kind of attributed to why more videos haven't been hitting the channel. And that's because those two videos I worked with a sponsor, Basil Hayden Whiskey. So there's a lot of logistics that go into it that have to do a lot of copy approval, but those are two videos that I worked really hard on and I really love the way they turned out. I think they're super cinematic and to kind of give you a quick kind of teaser, uh, Basil Hayden's idea was to show how to host an event even during social distancing and quarantine um, kind of settings. So with my wife, we did a at-home happy hour here in this apartment where we go through our favorite kind of happy hour food and cuisine, which is Japanese izakaya. So we kind of show our version, give some recipes and also what we're drinking. And then the second video is me going down to San Diego to go visit my brother. I've always wanted to bring my brother on this channel, so it's been really cool. It's been a great excuse to kind of include him. And so we go around and we go just take photos down in San Diego, um, something that me and my brother both bond over, uh, which, is, which, is, which is photography. So uh, those are two pretty cool videos um, that I really like and I can't wait to uh, share them with you. I just need to wait for some brand approval, but it should happen in the next one to two weeks, I hope, knock on wood. Um, but that's about it, um, how I'm doing. I feel a lot more motivated, I'm a lot more excited. I do feel like I am gonna be pumping out more videos. I feel like I've finally perfected or dialed in the whole video production process where it's a lot more manageable even with my um, nine to five job. So look forward to that. And I think that's everything in terms of updates. So we'll go ahead and move on to the Q and A. Um, so actually the Q and A is actually something that I'm super excited about. 
I stole this idea from a podcast that I listened to, which is The Grey NATO, and they asked their viewers to kind of call in. So they submit voice memos and then they would play them and then answer the questions. So I basically stole that exact template and people actually took the time out of the day to record a message, which is super cool. Uh, whenever I do anything with YouTube, it's always in my voice. So obviously when I narrate the video, it's my voice. When I'm talking the script over my head, it's my voice. When I'm reading your comments, it's my voice. So to have people call in and, and to hear the voice has been like really weird slash cool. So I actually get to put voices with the people that are watching and um, you know, one that stood out I had someone ask a question from Australia. So just to hear an Australian accent and ask me a question and talk about Hugo or hear the, hear the name Hugo was, was, was really different and really cool. So this is something that I'd like to continue. So if this format of Q and A is, is something that you like, let me know. Um, and if you do want to submit your own, uh, question, you can record with any voice memo app on your phone and then just email it to eric at hugo.com. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again. I would like to maybe make this a monthly thing where we can just sit and chat and maybe deep dive on questions. And I know some of you aren't comfortable with asking questions via voice and that's fine. So I also did a little poll or questionnaire on Instagram. So I'll be getting to those questions and doing a little bit of a quick fire round at the end of these, uh, at, at the end of these, I don't know what you call them, calling questions. So those will be like one to two sentence answers. So if you did ask a question on Instagram, I'll be sure to get to those. So without further ado, let's get into our first question from Carl. Hey, Eric, thanks for answering my question. My question is, what is the most difficult component of managing your YouTube channel? Also, are there any components that you have outsourced for someone else to manage? Thanks a lot. Take care. Peace. All right, um, first up, thank you, Carl, for submitting your question. And when it comes to YouTube, the most difficult thing for me is script writing, but weirdly enough, I'm not a big fan of, of or I wasn't a big fan of English or grammar or language, but it's kind of become this challenge for me ever since I got roasted on my first apartment tour and I kept saying my fiance and me instead of my fiance and I. And I really took that to heart and I wanted to get better at grammar. So even though I struggle with it, I still like to do it. So I think I could benefit from outsourcing it, but I haven't outsourced it just because I still enjoy it. I also still enjoy the editing process and I still enjoy the video making process. If, if you wanna talk about outsourcing, uh, maybe this might count, which is uh, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is a, a uh, a B-roll library where you can pull stock footage and use it in your videos. So that's kind of been a little bit of an outsource that's made video production a little bit easier since I don't have to B-roll everything. And if I'm looking for just kind of a more moody B-roll, like like just like scenic landscapes or maybe aerial shots, that's saved me some time because I can just pull from their 4K library and the stuff looks really good. Um, but I think for the most part, I would say, yeah, Scripting is probably still the hardest. I still have all my friends uh, join on a Google Doc and check for grammar, check for spelling, check for commas, check for everything. And um, that's been a big help and that's probably why I haven't outsourced it yet. But um, yeah, thanks for the question. Hopefully that, that answers it. Um, still doing a lot of stuff uh, uh, here at home and, and, and I enjoy it. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. Uh, so moving on to the next question from Chris. Eric, your house is always so neat and tidy. I was wondering whether or not you might have uh, a place in your house where you allow yourself to be untidy. All right, um, this is a question I get a lot. And if you could see what was behind this camera right now, you would realize that the house isn't always as clean as it appears to be in videos. Um, not that I'm trying to uh, showcase something that unrealistic. Our house, I I'll admit I do like a clean house, but um, you know, Jennifer and I both work nine to fives and then also running side gigs like one coffee and then two, this video production stuff gets messy. Like the day before I went down to San Diego to go 
bag the coffee, it was a complete disaster. I was putting stickers on the bags. I was, you know, double checking, packing, and, and everything was, was, was in like dismay. And that's kind of the reality of us kind of working and, and doing this YouTube thing also. So first and foremost, the house is not always clean as it may seem. Second, I have a lot of photography gear and the photography video closet is the one where I allow myself to kind of get untidy. I try to keep it organized and, and, and somewhat neat, but there's just so much gear and the closet is so small. I have downsized some of the equipment I have, but that is like the one place I kind of let go because I'm always pulling stuff in and out that even if I organize things, the, 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 the space is too small, that stuff kind of just moves around and it, it, it just, it never stays clean for long since, since I'm always shooting something. So that is the one kind of area in our house that I let get messy. Um, but one tip I have is we kind of do maintenance cleaning. So at the end of every day, we will make sure to, you know, do the dishes, maybe tidy up real quick because we found that if we left everything for Saturday or Sunday, one, it would kill our weekend and two, it just would take up too much time. Putting five to 10 minutes in at the end of each day has really made a difference in, in cleaning or chore workload. And um, that's made probably the biggest difference in why our house looks so clean. And then also one other thing is when I record videos, I like the house to be clean because I'm a one man show. So um, again, behind the camera, there's like, three different tripods, there's lighting, there's sound, there's the camera, there's props, there's cases, there's reflectors, there's light modifiers all around here that you can't see. Um, so, having the so having the house clean allows me to move stuff more freely without tripping over other things. And if I'm carrying expensive equipment, the last thing I wanna do is kind of trip over this stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty mindful when it comes to recording because I, I want that freedom to put lights up or put sound equipment up without feeling like it's um annoying i guess so house isn't always clean and too yeah my photography and videography closet is probably the most messiest thing in in this in this house so um thanks again chris for your question so next let's move on to a question from suzanne this question comes to you from the beautiful and sunny houston texas even people in happy relationships or people that live with roommates can still feel pretty lonely during these times. So my question is, what do you do to get yourself back on track whenever loneliness hits you these days? All right, really good question. I think this is obviously very, uh, very uh, current with, with the way things are going. And even in a, in, a, in a happy relationship, like my wife and I we love each other. We've been best friends for ever before we even got married and we still get on each other's nerves when we're occupying, you know, a single bedroom home. So for us, or, or for me at least, and I, and I would recommend you to try it, is really trying to find a sense of self, find something, whether that be a hobby or a creative outlet where you can kind of go and get fulfillment from those activities rather than from people. I think they're, is no substitute for human interaction, but every once in a while, I do think we need alone time. So instead of maybe thinking of it as loneliness, maybe embrace it as alone time and, and time for yourself to kind of collect your thoughts and, and just be alone. I think there is value from being by yourself and not always having social interactions. So so in my case for me, one is the gym. Like I, I need to work out, I love to work out. When I get a workout in and done, I just, feel so much lighter, I th can think clearer, it is a stress reliever, and it, it's also just fun for me. And then two, this might not apply to everyone, is, 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 is this channel being creative and being able to make videos and, and, and kind of give some sort of value to people watching has been very satisfying and very fun also. So um, just, I guess, embrace being alone and then to just find something that you truly love. I think that'll get you out of bed each morning if you find some reason to wake up, even if your roommates or loved ones are busy or maybe, you know, you just are kind of in that cabin fever state of mind. That's probably where I would look to first is kind of within. So I've, I've, I've found a lot of value and resiliency out of being able to rely on myself, um, even though I do heavily rely on my wife um, for 
social interaction and, and I can't imagine going through quarantine without her. I do still like to do my do stuff by myself or, or be alone every once in a while. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. So next question is from Kevin. Hey Eric, this is Kevin from Sydney, Australia. I love your content because it has the same style, but yet it's so diverse because it shows so many aspects of your life. But in saying that, how do you personally balance your full-time job, content for Hugo, and your relationships as well? Thanks. First up, really cool that someone from Australia sent it in. I think it's cool hearing different accents um, and just realizing that people all over the world are watching. So just, just wanted to kind of touch on that. But uh, thank you, Kevin, for the question. And uh, balance is hard. And I think it kind of comes more down to a priority system. So it's kind of a tie right now between work and relationship. Obviously, I'd rather spend more time with my wife, but um in turn work pays the bills and, and 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 work pays for rent so um on weekends i don't if, if if there's an opportunity to spend time with my wife i drop everything so if i don't have to work and maybe i want to make a youtube video but i i, I want to spend time with my wife that'll always be the first thing and that, that's probably another thing that contributes to content creation consistency is i enjoy my lazy Saturdays, I enjoy my lazy Sundays. And you know, if, if I've been working and it's been a long week all week, the last thing I wanna do is probably make a YouTube video. And I, and I think it shows if I do try and force myself to shoot, I just I just don't have the energy or the emotion. I think it comes across through camera or, or in camera. So um, in terms of balance, my wife takes priority if I'm not working. So I, and not just my wife, but family also. Like if I have a chance to babysit my nieces or nephews, like I will jump at the chance. I love spending time with them and just playing video games and, and, and just hanging out and talking about random stuff, whatever they're talking about. Um, so that's the most important thing to me, which is family and, and, and social interaction time. Um, when it comes to work and YouTube, I think that's probably the most interesting one is I will find any way to squeeze in shooting time between work. So since I am working from home, there is a little bit more leniency and I can maybe set up this camera and do this Q and A before I have to go back to work. But, um, you know, I, it, it does get a little messy, gets a little hectic. Like sometimes I'll leave up all of this photo and camera gear, um, because I don't have time to clean it up. So I might just shoot and then go directly back to, to work to kind of make everything fit in. My wife doesn't really like it when I leave all this gear out, but it, it it's kind of the only way it, it works and she kind of understands. So um, I, I, I don't think I have a good answer. I don't really think there's much balance. I think it's kind of just the priority system. If, 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 it, if it's relationship time and, and if it's family time, like that's gonna always be the first thing that I reach for. And then with work and YouTube, I just try and slot in recording or editing time when I can, when I'm not busy at work. So. It is a little messy. I think I do sacrifice a little bit of sleep. So if I am working a full day and I still want to edit a video, I'll probably stay up till two, three in the morning sometimes editing videos. And I think the way that only works though is I actually enjoy that process. So, so it is a hobby, it's still creative. It hasn't become a second job. And I think that's why it can kind of work in tandem with, with the YouTube channel. So that's, kind of the best answer I can come up with. I kind of, I, I think I'm lucky enough that my wife lets me run with ideas sometimes. So yeah, um, that, that, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, moving on to a question from Julian. Hey Eric, I love the clean and minimal approach you take to your life as well as your video production. Everything is always planned and structured. Do you ever embrace a level of spontaneity in your life? If so, in what ways? Keep up the awesome work, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, thank you, Julian, for the question. But I love spontaneity. Um, me and my wife will play hooky from work. Like if we want to go up to the mountains, obviously with COVID, it's a little weird. But you know, we've called off a couple of Fridays sometimes, and we've just bounced up to the mountains because we really wanted to go skiing. Um, the reason videos are structured is because for me it's easier and more efficient to shoot if I have 
structure since I am still doing my full time job. I need to be efficient with my time. So having structure really helps me stay on track and, and get the most out of shooting time. So instead of taking maybe three hours, it only takes me like 30 minutes to do a shot if I plan it out correctly. Um, the other reason why I, I have structure with these videos is I want it to be efficient in also giving the message or giving the value. I think it just, when I watch or when I read or when I script, I think having just like this clean um, procedure, I think helps people understand it better. And I, I think that's mostly worked for this channel is when, is when people can digest it easier. I think they're more likely to keep watching and, and they're more likely to, to get what I'm doing. So my life is far from this structure. The videos are obviously very structured. Um, I, I do still think they represent stuff that happens true to life. Obviously stuff might be a little bit more tuned and that's just, again, to, to make sure the point gets across. But in our life, we're very spontaneous. Sometimes, you know, we'll drop everything and do nothing on a Saturday. Sometimes we'll wake up and we'll be like, hey, let's go hiking or, or let's go on a bike ride. Um, we don't actually have too much stuff planned and, and especially on vacation, like the way we vacation is when we go somewhere, we don't, we're not, we, we try and hit the, the, the big iconic things. Like if we go to France, we'll go to the, to the Eiffel Tower, right? But other than that, we'll spend the rest of the day kind of just wandering and, and being spontaneous. You know, I find that structure is really tiring. So I have maybe like one goal that I, I want to accomplish in, in general when it comes to anything in life. And then after that, I kind of just let the day kind of go. And if we don't reach that goal, fine, but I, I will do my best to maybe, you know, go visit the Eiffel Tower. If we don't visit the Eiffel Tower, maybe the next day. And if we don't, no big deal. Like we'll find other stuff to do. So um, I like to think I'm very resilient and, 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 and flexible that, you know, I don't need this kind of structure um, in my life. So for the most part, I would say my life is is kind of on the fly with just intent on accomplishing certain things throughout the day. And um, again, other than that, the videos are structured because uh, I think it just one helps me and two helps the, the, the audience kind of digest the content a little bit easier um, if, if, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's, I'm happy with that answer. Uh, next question is from Dave. Hi there, I'm David. Love your content and videos, Eric. You're one of the most calming and interesting lifestyle channels out there. And I would like to answer you, where did you get the main ideas of your videos? And if you have some kind of inspiration from another specific channel or people that you follow. Yeah, greetings from Mexico and I can't wait to try your new coffee. Saludos. Uh, hi, David. Uh, thanks for sending in a question all the way from Mexico. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of... I think I, I, I take inspiration from everywhere and originally I... I've said this a lot in the beginning that all of the videos I originally made were a way to practice videography. So I pull a lot of inspiration from those travel vloggers like uh, Rob Stroke, Peter McKinnon, um, and other people in the videography photography space who would give tutorials, uh, Chris Chu, um, Jason Vong, uh, even like MKBHD, I really liked their shooting style or I like some of the tutorials they would show and that, that was a reason to make a video. I want, if I wanted to practice maybe new lighting techniques, maybe new slow-mo techniques, like that was, that was the big kind of um, motivation to make these videos, but um, I needed a story, right? So I, I, I tried to go out and just record random things and I, and I realized maybe technically it was interesting, but I, as like a, as a holistic video, it, it didn't make sense to me and, and it didn't, really get the whole technique across for me at least so i made myself kind of the character in this youtube channel story thing um so 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 that was kind of like the main reason and that's still kind of the main inspiration if i see something cool on on, on youtube and like i want to try it i'll go out and try it and, and that usually facilitates me to make a video um in terms of like maybe aesthetical inspiration i like mr porter Obviously, Matt Diavella, huge with minimalism. And I would say he was probably the one that kind of pushed me to, to start 
the channel and not just kind of make videos on the side. Um, he did his own minimalist wardrobe uh, video and I thought, hey, like I wanna do something like that. Like mine looks a little different, but I think I can kind of maybe do something similar to what he's doing. So those are, are, are kind of the two channels. I think that's kind of my channel in a nutshell. It's like minimalism plus kind of like this little Mr. Porter, like cinematic aesthetic to it. And um, who else? Is there anybody else I'm forgetting? I mean, I'm, I'm subscribed to a couple of like gaming channels. I'll watch PewDiePie from time to time. I don't know if that directly gives me inspiration, but it is just fun to watch people play video games. I, I enjoy that. I like I like video games and stuff like that. Um, oh, I guess like some cooking channels too. I watch like Binging with Babish. Uh, who else do I watch cooking? Oof, I forget his name, but but cooking also too. Like I, I share a little bit of cooking on the channel also. And so if I see something interesting from them, I, I, I'll you know, include that recipe or I'll include some kind of recipe inspired by them. And that's, that, that's it. I think I, th there's a lot of in it, random inspiration throughout my life. So if I forgot anything, um, I probably did forget something, but if I forgot somebody and I'll include it in the description because I don't want to leave anybody out because, um, inspiration is, is very valuable to me. Um, a little bit of a ramble. Hopefully that answered your question. All right, so our next question comes from Gabriella. Hi, Eric. It's Gabriella here from Italy, as you can probably tell from my accent. And, uh, I would like to thank you because I have been really inspired by your videos about building a minimal yet complete wardrobe. But I would like to ask you, does it make sense to spend a lot of money on um, high quality uh, items such as clothing that anyway are depletable or instead is better to save for some uh, better preserving value items such as watches uh, or things like that. Thank you and by all. First up, thank you, Gabriella, for sending in a question all the way from Italy. Uh, so when it comes to deciding whether or not to invest in clothing or something more substantial, like a watch or jewelry, uh, first, I think you should look at your budget and make sure that you can comfortably afford it without going broke. In general, I do think it is worth spending more money um, in terms of quality, not necessarily brand name. Um, if you're going to get a lot of use out of it and if you do want your clothes to last, a lot of the times that little extra bit of money does equate to a quantifiable difference in terms of quality. Um, so I'm okay with it and that's because I know that I'm going to wear that piece and I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Um, if you want some alternatives, I think there are a lot of amazing D2C brands out there that make as good if not better clothing and even watches than some of the brands out there and you're going to save some money because they aren't as spending as much money on marketing and they, they're not having to deal with the middleman so look towards there and then finally my favorite thing that i recommend to everyone is to check secondhand sites like depop or grail they're all awesome sites that will get you amazing quality pieces at significantly less and they're probably like new sometimes they're new without tags and usually they're just they're gently worn um, does require a little bit more effort on your part, but again, this is a way to get high quality clothing cheaper and even um, more sustainably since you're not purchasing them new, you're actually preventing clothing from going into the landfill. So um, that's something to look at if you're kind of uh, having a hard time balancing money with with, with quality uh, and, and just more expensive clothing, I guess. So again, thank you. Uh, Hope to, hope to return to Italy one day. That's where my wife and I got engaged. So it, 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 it has a special place in our in our hearts. So thanks again for uh, submitting your question. All right, next question comes from Gunner. Hey, Eric, Gunner calling from Southern Illinois. I was 18 when I first saw your videos and you have really helped me dial in my own style over the last couple of years. In particular, I've enjoyed your watch content. I actually am rocking a two watch collection with an Explorer 14270 and an SKX 007, but my grail is a Longe Saxonia Automatic in white gold, though I'm going to need another 20 years or so to afford that one. I know you fancy many different watches and was wondering what your grail is and if you ever plan to pursue one. 
Thanks. I'm looking forward to hearing back your answer. Um, hi, Gunnar. Uh, thanks again for uh, submitting a question. And first up, pretty sweet to watch collection, explore and SKX absolute rock solid foundation. And I think the Saxonia would actually pretty much be the answer for like the grail or the third watch in that collection. Um, when it comes to grails, honestly, I think I have the two grails I would ever want. One is my Submariner, which I was lucky enough to trade in my 1999 A-Serial into my local dealer, Tim. Shout out to Tim at Fog City Vintage if you're looking for a vintage watch. Um, definitely uh, give him, hit him up. Uh, he was nice enough to let me trade in my A-Serial for an E-Serial. So E-Serial is a birthier watch, so this watch is actually just as old as I am, it's 30 years old. It was made in 1990, which I think is super cool. And the Samariner has always been my grail watch. So to have one in a birth year is, I don't really think I'd want anything past that. Or I guess I thought I didn't want anything past that. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you watch and consume a lot of Hodinkee being fellow watch lover. And, you know, watching talking watches, that's probably one of my favorite segments that they produce and, and, and hearing from guests about receiving watches from family members. That was something that was very touching and romantic that I kind of romanticized about and I thought I would never get because uh, my dad's not into watches, but my grandfather was, uh, but he has a son, my uncle, and I always thought that his watch would go to him. Uh, lo and behold, my uncle passed on the watch because one, he doesn't wear watches, and two, thought that I would appreciate it more. Um, so I was lucky enough to get my grandfather's watch and honestly, I can't see a grill pass out because that watch means the most to me and that's the watch that I can stare at for days and emotionally bring something up in me. And I think it's cool to be able to wear something that he wore. So I don't have a grail per se right now, but um, if I was to play the game, I'd probably would look at a dress watch, also a precious metal dress watch. Um, somewhere along the lines of Paddock or Longe, and I'd probably want something that was hand wound. I really like having to wind the watch. I know automatic is a lot more convenient, but there's just something about the thinner case and precious metal that I like about um, hand wound watches. So that would probably be my grails, either a Paddock or a Longe hand wound, probably white gold also. So yeah, thanks again. Uh, hope you get your grail one day. All right, so finally our last question comes from Daniel. Hi Eric, it's Daniel from Indonesia. Really thank you for all of your videos. They are really helpful for me to make my way towards minimalist lifestyle. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you think about minimalist life in general? Uh, I remember you have wanted to make the video for quite a while and I was just really wondering if uh, you will make it or not. And another question would be, uh, what have you been up to lately and what uh, would we like to expect as viewer? for your channel soon keep up the great work thanks so much um hi daniel uh thanks for sending a question all the way over indonesia uh as a viewer i'm gonna answer i'm gonna go from the end and work my way backwards as a viewer you can expect more content i think i spent a lot of time dialing in my my video workflow and i think i'm finally at a point where i can create um videos of quality still while still turning out, turning them out more consistently. Um, so I've really been practicing talking head, dialing in video settings, working on lighting. Um, other than that, I've been doing a lot of exercising, biking, walking, hiking with the wife, uh, cooking to stay busy while at home in quarantine. Um, so that's kind of what I've been up to. Um, taking lots of photos keeps me pretty sane also. Um, when it comes to minimalist video, I know I've promised that for a really long time now. It's coming. 
gonna give myself a deadline. I'm gonna give myself to the end of December uh, to produce that video. Reason it's taken so long is I've never been happy with the script. I've wrote it like literally 50, 60 times, like no joke. Um, and it's just because uh, I really want to make it approachable. I think anytime people hear the word minimalist, they think of scarcity, like, oh, I'm gonna have to get rid of stuff. And I don't want it to be that intimidating. I really want to show the benefits in, in, into why you would want to choose minimalism and how it can look different for each person. Um, so one, the script, and two, getting B-roll for like that video has been kind of hard. Um, so I'm working on it. Again, I think I've kind of dialed in my video processes and I think that I finally have a good hold on what I really want to show in terms of minimalism. Um, so yeah, that video should come out soon. And I guess to give you a sneak peek and answer your first question, um, the whole reason for minimalism is the why. It's like, why would you want to do minimalism? And, and for me, it just helps me stay present and appreciate more moments with my family, my friends, my wife. And that's what matters most to me. It, it, so minimalism is, is all it is, is it's a tool that helps me um, enjoy what is most important and, and means the most to me. And, and that's why I practice it and, and that's why I choose it. So I'll get more in depth into that. I promise that the video will be out by the end of December. You can hold me to that. Um, but yeah, lots more stuff coming. I'm glad that you've been watching and stick around. I promise there is gonna be a lot more good stuff for all the viewers out there. Uh, so that concludes the audio section. Thank you to everyone that submitted a question. Um, it was really awesome hearing people's voices rather than me just read off questions. I think it will come across in the video as, as a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more fun. Um, and for the people who weren't comfortable asking questions, we'll go ahead and get into this little quick fire round. I'll go through Instagram and I will answer maybe 10, 10 to 15 questions. Keep it really simple, really light. I know this video is a lot longer, but let me know if this is something you like, this more casual chat kind of video. I enjoy it, I think it's fun. And again, I do like hearing from you. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna set up my phone to record so I can answer your questions from Instagram. All right, I had to get my phone, it was charging, it was running low, um, but let's do this. All right, will you, regret, will you be upgrading to the new phone? If so, which model? No, I probably won't upgrade my iPhone until USB-C comes along. Um, most of my stuff is USB-C and I do like only having one cable. Uh, and in terms of performance, I don't really think I need it. I can edit Lightroom videos, edit video, and edit Lightroom photos and video on my iPhone X just fine, it's plenty powerful, and the OLED screen is all I could ever really ask for, so I probably won't upgrade. Um, do you have any advice on how to split finances with significant other? I think if you're co-inhabiting a space, I think it's pretty easy to just cut stuff straight down the middle, that's what my wife and I do. Um, and when it comes to picking up dinner tabs or maybe grocery tabs, um, I think it we don't really count. I think we're actually pretty good about splitting it up pretty evenly, we'll just kind of pay as we see fit. Um, but it's definitely a conversation worth having with your significant other. And I think if you live together, 50% seems about right to me. Um, best advice for a teen? Uh, man, I think there's so much stuff I wish I knew as a teenager. But in general, I think it would be, be confident in yourself. I think it's easy to, to be subject to social pressures or, or, or um, what's, what's the term? Peer pressure. These are to succumb to peer pressure and don't do your own thing, be your own person. If what you do, other people see as weird, don't listen to them. I mean, you need to do your own thing and I think you'll realize when you grow up that everyone else is or was as insecure as most teenagers are. So don't be afraid, do your own thing and believe in yourself. Um, what is one habit that you don't do anymore that you wish you would pick up again? Habit? Uh, I don't know if I have a habit in terms of hobby. I kind of want to pick up woodworking again. When I first got my job out of uh, college, I had enough money to take woodworking classes. So I rented out a table saw and I stopped because it gets pretty expensive. But 
it was fun making your own stuff and I would really like to start it up again and make my own furniture to save some money and make furniture that I actually want. Uh, how do you know if you're in a negative, not good engagement? Uh, I think if you ask yourself that question, you're probably not in a good environment. I don't know what you mean by engagement. If you're talking about engagement, like with a significant other, um, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Maybe just be honest with them and have the conversation. If you need to break up, if you're talking about relationships, if you're talking about an environment, I would say, just learn to say no. That's one thing I struggle with. I usually always say yes. And I end up being someplace that I don't really want to be. And it's usually a negative environment anyways. Um, hope that helps. I'm not sure what you mean by engagement, but um, I'll take a whack at it anyways. Uh, how has the Orslo 105s break in process since they are already one wash? Um, there basically is them. They are super soft. Uh, quality is amazing. Again, I love Orslo. Orslo is probably my top brand that I've found. I love anything made in Japan. So recommend them. No break in process. Super comfortable. I think the only downside is they only come in five sizes. So the waist is a little large on me. So I'll probably have to get it um, tailored to fit more properly so I don't have to wear a belt with it. Um, how to look expensive on a budget. Uh, this is something I wouldn't recommend if you're on a budget. Probably shouldn't be buying too many things. Um, but if you are looking to get the most for your money, something I always tell people, shop secondhand. You're going to get really good deals on really good clothes for a really good price. Um, not to mention if it is a little bit more sustainable. Uh, kind of, the, I guess, um, going along with the question, best app for buying clothing secondhand apart from Grail, not great in the UK. Uh, Depop, Depop is great. Uh, Instagram follower recommended it to me. Oh, I forget his name, but he he's from Europe. Actually, I don't even remember where he's from. But he recommended Depop, he's from Europe, so I imagine UK should have a pretty good population of people using that app as well. Um, How did you decide to start a coffee business? How difficult was it? It was. How difficult it was. Um, I decided to because I can true in I wanted to monetize my channel some way, somehow, and coffee made sense. I think it's something that people can actually enjoy and they'll use, and it's something that I always um, had a love for. It was difficult with COVID, everything was delayed, so anytime I set up a timeline or a deadline, it would always get extended because everything that needed to be shipped in was delayed. So it was a little more difficult than I think it needed to be. So it might be simpler if, you know, COVID isn't as rampant. Uh, top three places to visit before you die. Uh, Yosemite is super nice. Uh, I love the one freeway. These are all in California. And then I guess, um, What's another place? I really like Niseko, Japan. I would, I would definitely go that, there again. Super beautiful, nothing too iconic, but the snowboarding and, and skiing is, is amazing out there. Uh, what is your origin? How did you come up with your lifestyle? The origin, I guess you mean ethnicity. I'm 100% Filipino. I came up with the lifestyle because I got into Scandinavian um, fashion, which was very minimal. That kind of led me into Scandinavian culture, which kind of led me to Huga and minimalism. And that's how I ended up with this lifestyle. Uh, hi, is there any trend in minimalism in interior design and fashion? I think interior design, I think a lot of minimalists associate with like light wood. If you look at our apartment, we use dark wood. Um, that is a trend I noticed. As far as fashion goes, um, I think the trainers are making a big comeback, like the minimal trainers, like uh, Asics, New Balance, Saucony, all of those are, are kind of making a big reappearance. I don't know if it's a trend or just rediscovery, but those are brands I all like, so I'm all for it. Uh, how do you want to retire? Uh, I don't think I'd ever really want to retire. I think I want to always be working or doing something that I love. Um, I don't think I could just sit there and do nothing. So I guess I would like to retire from my normal nine to five job and have the means to travel and still do stuff that I love and, and kind of bring value and content to, I guess, whoever I might be delivering it to. Um, if that answers your question. Uh, 
Uh, did you stick to minimalism the first time you tried or did it take a few tries? I think when I first approached minimalism, I approached it from a slower standpoint. So I didn't just overhaul and throw everything away. I was very um, conscious about building it up slowly because I know that big changes are never sustainable. So I really kind of started slowly adding stuff to my life and eventually I, I built upon it to snowball into what you see now. So I don't think it's hard to stick to if you, if you go about it in a sustainable way, which is nice and slow, like really figure out what aspects you want to apply to your life because minimalism is going to be unique to each individual and not, not everyone is going to apply the same things or get the same thing from minimalism. So just be weary of that. Don't fall into the pitfalls that you see a lot of YouTube, um, creators you know where they empty out their closet and they talk about minimalism that you can't donate sadness the same way you can't buy happiness it's 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 kind of one in the same one's the reciprocal of the other but um yeah just nice and slow uh this is for my aunt brussels sprouts or green beans for thanksgiving brussels sprouts uh la, 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 la. let's do two more how do you like living in silicon valley so far do you see yourself staying there for a long time it's okay honestly i'd Probably want to move back down to Southern California, either LA or San Diego. Um, I think people are just too into their phones and too into work up here. No one's really aware. Like if you go, even if you go out to dinner now and you see people out on eating outside, they're all on their phones. They're not talking to each other. It's um, not everyone, but in general, it's just kind of what I see out here. And um, I like the I like the weather up here. I do like the weather of the Bay Area, but. I think I would rather be down somewhere in Southern California. Uh, let's end it here. What's your ultimate life goal? So my ultimate life goal would be to find some way to help with the school lunches at the public schools here in the United States. I think it's kind of a travesty what we serve kids here. And I understand there is this balance that needs to occur between money and 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 the food. but. I think there's always a way to bring quality food at any budget. So that's something that I would want to work on. And the reason that this has become my ultimate life goal is I am a big fan of Alice Waters. She's a local chef out here in Berkeley and she works with schools and she teaches kids how to garden, harvest and enjoy food in a balanced manner. And I get a lot of joy from food and that's something that I can really relate with and it'd be something that I would like to help out with because I do think that kids are a direct representation of what they put in their body. Like it's easy to tell that a kid is cranky because they had too much candy or maybe they lack focus and energy because the lunch they ate was just full of preservatives and sugar and wasn't, you know, meant to sustain their body. So that's something that I'm pretty passionate about and something that I would like to get involved in. Um, so hopefully sometime in the future, I have a means and a ways to do it. I have kind of played around with budgets and and, and building um, menus that I think that kids would actually like. So that's something that I'm working towards. Um, so that's gonna be it for the q and I'm running low on battery anyways on my voice recorder. But if you are interested in entering the coffee giveaway, it's running again from now until December 4th. Um, Q shout out to Gunnar, Daniel, Gabriella, Carl, Chris, David, Julian, Kevin, and Suzanne for sending in questions. If I didn't get to your question, I would highly recommend sending it in as a uh, voice memo. It's more likely to get answered because I think this is just a more interesting way of answering questions instead of me running down through my phone. I probably will still always do some version of a quick fire, but again, I really appreciate these voice memos. So if you are thinking about sending one, use any voice memo app, whether on Android or iPhone and send it to eric at huga.com. I'll go ahead and stockpile them for next time as I'd like to keep doing this um, again next month in December. Um, so thank you to everyone who tuned in. Hopefully this kind of casual chat, something you enjoyed. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.